Let's start though, because when we talk about getting ready, you got to get your imports in place. And South East Melbourne Phoenix have done exactly that this morning. A man, and you're going to tell us more in a second, Liam, a man who, above everything else, the tenacity he brings and pairing him with Mitch Creek is going to be incredibly fun to watch. It is. It's going to be exciting. And it's always exciting when uh, when the import signings drop. Ben Moore, a 6'8 power forward, can play the four and the five. Um, played four years at SMU. Um, has you know, played in the G League, had a cup of coffee with the Indiana Pacers at one point, played with Ty Webster at Galatasaray not too long ago. And then last season um, with the Fort Wayne Mad Ants in the G League alongside Brian Bowen, incidentally. And so I like it. I like this guy. He's a high energy guy, big motor, 6'8", but a 6'11 wingspan. They're going to look to play him at the four and the five. Great teammate, I'm told. Um, excellent defender. Guy can put it on the floor and get to the rim. Um, I spoke to Matt Nielsen, who coached him at the Summer League not too long ago with the uh, San Antonio Spurs. He said, great pickup. This is, this is exactly the type of guy they needed. And uh, they have an, a fast, high-energy front court that's going to be fun to watch. And Homer, so we spoke about this and, and the fact of waiting and waiting and waiting to see how it all sort of fits out. And South East Melbourne Phoenix did this. Yanni Wetzel, of course, recommitted a couple of weeks ago. Dame Pinot was outstanding last year in the centre. So they've been able to go and get a guy who does predominantly play that power forward position, but with the wingspan that Liam spoke about, can play centre as well. So you've been able to almost kill, kill two birds with one stone here, knowing that Pinot and Wetzel can do what they do. And this guy fits. What I, what I really like about this pickup is not only his motor, he's that combination between he and Mitch Creek is going to remind us a bit of what they were missing last year with the player who robbed us and only gave us five minutes of what could have been <laughs> Ty Wesley. I think that combination is going to work pretty much similar to that, but he has a higher motive. So I'm, a, I'm really excited to see him him really pair up with that team, especially Mitch Creek. I think they're going to do some serious damage. And you got to remember, Andrew Bogut is not there. So a lot of teams do not have that dominant seven-foot center. So he's going to be able to do more damage, I feel. Not there yet. <laughs> Liam, are we to assume they're just going to play this high octane, we're just going to run and gun, and that's the type of import point guard they're going to roll in. Someone who off the rim or out the net gets the ball two dribbles there off to the races. They're going to bring in a, a high level point guard for sure. Mm -hmm. A bucket getter, a guy who could push it in transition, of course, but is is um, just as comfortable working in the half court. They, they've got some guys, I'm not going to name any names right now, but they've got some guys that they're looking at. One in particular who is really high level so hopefully they can land him make that work the thing one of the things i like about this ben moore signing i flagged on the show a little while ago when with when you've got dane pino and you've got yanni wetzel as Corey was just talking about the, what you needed was a a cam oliver type a guy who you know cam oliver's six eight as well mm -hmm. Incredible athlete, you know, can do a whole bunch of very strong. But I, I like what they've got in Ben Moore in terms of that versatility. You can start him at the five with Creek at the four if you want. And you've got these two guys, two big horses off the bench that can come in and play that spot. Or you can slide him down. Those guys, a few of them can slide up and down that lineup really nicely. So I like the versatility that he brings most of all, as well as all those other intangibles. Dane Pinot's season last year, the one that took us all by surprise, and then also the very fact that he continued to play that high sort of uh, level as the year continued. So it wasn't like he rolled in, played a good first month. Keith Benson wasn't who we thought he was going to be. And Dane sort of got that good start to the year and sort of filtered out. They bought in. They didn't probably get the combination right in the second half of the year. But that's what Dane Pinot has done. He's gone to that next level. And when guys make that jump, either for an entire season or at least – in the basis of the second half of the year and does it again in preseason, it makes recruiting so much easier. Rather than go out and get a guy, big center, they might yeah. change the way they're going to play. They know that Dane is there. He's going to give them, you know, if he starts 10, 11, 12 boards a game, we know he's great defensively and he doesn't really need to put up a huge amount of points. So Tommy Greer, Simon Mitchell, the entire crew, they must be like, he's made our life a lot easier last year when it comes to recruiting the guy who fits and it looks like it's this guy. And you're sleeping on Yanni, too. Can't well, believe it. 
sleeping on our guy. I'm not sleeping on him. I'm simply saying we've seen Dane Pano do it. I expect Yanni Wetzel to be able to do it. I didn't burn his jersey for a reason, Liam. I still got it hanging at home in the rafters in my house. So uh, I'm not sleeping on Yanni. I just yeah. know Dane's been able to do it. But it's going to be fascinating to see how they work those rotations. They've got, mm-hmm. they've got so many different ways they can go. They can slide Creek down to the three and play more at the four. Pano and Wetzel in the middle. Um, lots of things they can do. They're going to be very difficult to play against if you are not ready for 40 minutes of pressure in their front court. Oh, this just fires it up, doesn't it? It just fires us up already, Homicide. When there's signings and we're, we're talking run and gun and we're talking getting up and we're, we're playing 40 minutes, you know we're getting close. Yeah, super excited, man. I mean, it's right around the corner. Got less than about, what, 50-something days before this thing kicks off. So I'm just really, really excited just like all these players are. Forget me. How about the rest of the, the league? Yeah. Hashtag NBL overtime. It has been the longest preseason of all time for, for pretty much every single player almost in the world right now outside of the NBA guys. Hashtag NBL overtime to get involved. Jump on at NBL on our socials. Check out the highlights from the big fella. The Phoenix have put up a mountain of stuff as well. So check it out. And Phoenix fans, you will not be disappointed. In fact, neutral fans. If your team's not playing the Phoenix, you're going to enjoy what he's got to be able to do. So check it out at NBL or on the Phoenix socials. All right. <laughs>